Hi, my name is Veronica Alanis, and I'm a pediatric and adolescent gynecologist at Children's Hospital Colorado. I will be reviewing female straddle injuries in this presentation. Acute genital bleeding in children and adolescents can be caused by a variety of reasons. In premenarchal girls, we are more likely to see bleeding from the lower genital tract, specifically the vulva and the vagina. In contrast, acute bleeding in postmenarchal girls is usually coming from the uterus. Trauma is the most common cause of prepubertal bleeding in the emergent setting. We see injuries that occur from playing inside and outside. For example, getting in and out of the bathtub, straddling a bicycle, or falling on playground equipment. These minor accidents result in injury because the genital tissues without estrogen in premenarchal girls are very thin and easily traumatized. Most injuries are unintentional, but providers should always assess for non-accidental trauma. For this, the history is very important. When and how did the accident occur? Was there a witness? And does the injury match the story? With any uncertainty, social work or the child protection team should be contacted. On physical exam, the provider should get as much information as possible without causing additional trauma. If examination is not tolerated or a repair is anticipated, sedation should be considered. It is very important to be efficient with the exam. Providers should always explain the exam to the patient get permission and provide reassurance to both the patient and the parent. Examination should be limited to external inspection only and speculum should never be inserted in a prepubertal girl. There are several positions that allow adequate visualization of the external genitalia. Frog leg or butterfly position is often used first. This can be done with the child sitting on the table or a parent's lap. Alternate positions are prone with knee to chest or on the patient's side. In either of these positions, visualization of the genitalia is enhanced with labial traction. The labia majora are grasped with the thumb and the forefinger and gently pulled laterally and downward to visualize the vestibule and the lower part of the vagina. On your exam, it's important to note the shape of the hymen. The hymen may have redundant borders, which can be seen with some estrogen exposure. More commonly, the hymen has clear, discrete edges and can be described as crescent-shaped when it's present from 1 to 11 o'clock or annular if completely circumferential. Notches and bumps in the hymen are common. In a study of over 100 girls selected for non-abuse, hymenal irregularities were seen in 51% of patients. This is typically a nonspecific finding, except in cases where the notch goes down to the base of the hymen. A deep notch is consistent with some sort of penetration into the vagina. On occasion, a hymenal anomaly can be identified on exam. In childhood, these have no clinical implications. They should, however, be referred to pediatric gynecology for counseling regarding implications during adolescence and adulthood. Moving on to types of trauma. Blunt trauma or straddle injuries typically result in bruising, hematomas, and lacerations. Penetrating trauma means something crossed or entered the vagina. Injuries from penetrating trauma more often need repair. In rare but serious cases, penetrating trauma can cause vaginal peritoneal perforation. Most blunt or straddle injuries do not require repair. These injuries do not cross the hymen or cause vaginal injury. We typically see superficial lacerations along the labia or at the vestibule, which is immediately outside of the hymen. If there is light bleeding or the laceration is hemostatic, these injuries can be treated with a topical antibiotic ointment and supportive care, including sitz baths, Tylenol, or ibuprofen, and cool compresses. Some blunt or straddle injuries result in more extensive injury extending to the perineum. If the laceration is gaping or there's significant bleeding, the patient may need a repair. All repairs should be done with sedation either at the bedside or in the operating room. Penetrating trauma can result in hymenal or vaginal injury. Most of these injuries will require operative management. This is a study looking at the management of genital trauma. As you can see, the majority of cases, nearly 88%, were managed non-operatively. Straddle injuries were the most common and penetrating injuries were more likely to need operative management. Hematomas should be managed conservatively. Most of these will resolve spontaneously and are treated with supportive care, including sitz baths, cool compresses, and over-the-counter pain meds. With larger hematomas, the patient should avoid direct pressure to minimize the risk of tissue necrosis. We would only consider surgical drainage if the hematoma is enlarging rapidly or the patient is hemodynamically unstable. 
Briefly, with any prepubertal bleeding, it's important to think about other causes of bleeding. The most common causes are vulvovaginitis, vaginal foreign body, lichen sclerosis, and urethral prolapse. Rare causes of bleeding include genital tract malignancy, hemangiomas, and genital warts. If you have any questions about straddle injury or would like to refer a patient, please visit our website or call our clinic at 720-777-2667.